All right, music. Seven, eight. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're discussing the behind the scenes drama of making HBO's The Idol. I'm worried she's having another psychotic break. For this video, we're looking at controversies and shakeups that have made The Idol one of modern television's most troubled productions. Are you gonna watch The Idol? Let us know in the comments. It's not uncommon for a TV show to completely change its premise. Baywatch Nights turned into X-Files on the beach, Family Matters became the Urkel half hour featuring the Winslows, and Together We Stand killed off Elliot Gould, changing its title to Nothing Is Easy. Nothing is easy, but you have to play. However, those shows all aired several episodes before getting retooled. Prior to even hitting the screen, HBO's The Idol did a 180 more than halfway through season one's production. At its core, this drama series has always been about a struggling pop star who becomes involved with a self-help guru slash cult leader. Because there's nothing about me that's relatable. The creative figures involved had two very different visions for this setup, however. Thus ensued a messy saga of firings, reshoots, and millions of dollars squandered. Why don't you just be yourself? First announced in June 2021, The Idol was the brainchild of Euphoria creator Sam Levinson, former nightclub entrepreneur Reza Fahim, and the artist formerly known as The Weeknd, Abel Tesfaye. The latter would also star as the aforementioned guru, with Lily Rose Depp signing on to play the titular idol. Hello, Angel. In addition to executive producing, Amy Simetz was enlisted to direct every episode. Simetz appeared in TV shows like The Killing and Stranger Things, as well as movies like 2019's Pet Cemetery. Her directing credits include small films such as Sun Don't Shine and episodes of shows like The Girlfriend Experience, which she co-created. The Idol seemed to be her most ambitious endeavor yet. As the titular Idol finds, though, showbiz is full of highs and lows. Let's make the dream happen. News broke in April of 2022 that Simetz would leave over creative differences. The cast and crew were also drastically shaken up. It was suspected that up-and-coming actors Steve Zissis and Julie Beth Gonzalez would be dropped from the main ensemble. Over the following months, Dan Levy, Hank Azaria, and several other big names were added. Where did he come from? Showrunner Joseph Epstein remained attached along with the two leads, although Depp would dye her hair blonde for reshoots. Do you trust me? Not really. <laughs> A lot of shows undergo major retoolings during development. Sometimes it's at the scripting stages. Other times it's after the pilot is shot. What stands out about the Idol's overhaul is how deep the series was already in production. Simetz had reportedly shot 80% of the six episode series upon leaving. Trust no one. When a troubled project is that far along, there are three options. One, limp to the finish line and hope for the best. Two, cease production and write it off for a tax break. Or three, start from scratch. That's what we're selling. Well, studios generally avoid the third choice given the time and money already invested. Even when a director is let go and extensive reshoots are called for, scrapping 80% of a 54 to $75 million project is rare. For reference, Richard Donner shot about 75% of Superman 2 when he was replaced by Richard Lester. Although Lester reshot much of that film, traces of Donner's contributions can still be found. <laughs> For The Idol, the practically finished season would be entirely reshot and rewritten, erasing Simetz's presence. Action! HBO released a statement saying that the show wasn't living up to their standards. After seeing Simetz's rough cut, Tesfe wanted to take the show in a different direction, putting less emphasis on the cult aspect. The singer-turned-actor also reportedly felt the series was leaning too much into a, quote, female perspective. Fire up the mic, let's go. In other words, Lily Rose Depp's character was getting more attention than his. Crew members argued that it was hard to give Tesfe the spotlight due to his other commitments. They tried to work around Tesfe's schedule, which made it all the more frustrating when he rejected Simetz's work. Some thought that Tesfe wanted a show that was all about the weekend, which sounded good to Levinson. Not the best job in the world. Since he was busy finishing Euphoria season two, Levinson hadn't dedicated much time to The Idol's production. The Idol was put on hold until Levinson was ready to provide his full attention. Due to this lengthy delay, many cast and crew members would be replaced. I promise you, there is a new Jocelyn coming. 
Levinson assumed directorial and writing duties, reshaping the idol to share more in common with Euphoria. According to cast and crew members, this entailed more, quote, disturbing sexual content and nudity. Sources also noted a shift in tone and some disturbing scenes written. Some would even go as far as to call it more graphic than Euphoria, which is saying a lot. While HBO seemed to be on board with these changes, certain crew members felt that it wasn't the show they signed up for. If anything, it was the exact opposite. So where should we start? An anonymous production member told Rolling Stone that the series was originally supposed to be, quote, a dark satire of fame. I want to be the biggest touring act ever. The show would have explored what stars are put through and the manipulative nature of the entertainment world. In the production member's words, quote, it went from satire to the thing it was satirizing. What I signed up for was a dark satire of fame and the fame model in the 21st century. Depp's character was intended to be a victim who reclaims power from the person taking advantage of her. According to another production member, Levinson's revamp turned it into a toxic romance, with Depp's character continually coming back to the man who mistreats her for the sake of her music. I like you. The crew also suggested that Cymetz was, quote, set up to fail, with incomplete scripts, a strict deadline, and Epstein having little show-running experience. He's brainwashed. In addition to directing, Cymetz was reportedly expected to revise scripts and write the finale. HBO allegedly had unrealistically high expectations, wanting Cymetz to turn in a show that matched Euphoria's production values with nearly half the budget. These people are wondering whether you still got that fire. Although Simons was encouraged to leave her own mark, it seemed like HBO really desired an even edgier Euphoria. So naturally, Levinson took the helm. For all the accolades that Euphoria has received, its sexualized depiction of teens has made Levinson a controversial figure. That was my first day as a guest on this new show, and I just didn't feel comfortable standing there naked. While some have taken issue with Levinson's new direction on the idol, others have complimented him. Depp praised Levinson as, quote, the best director she's worked with, feeling supported and respected. Another crew member appreciated that Levinson was so, quote, approachable in discussing his vision. Sam is, for so many reasons, the best director I have ever worked with. Levinson got points for resourcefulness as well. Since the whole season was reshot, Levinson had to save money, especially after the first production ate up between 54 and $75 million. Taking a look around Tesfaye's $70 million, 40,000 square foot Bel Air pad, Levinson suggested that they shoot there. Tesfaye agreed, moving somewhere else to, quote, stay in character. Levinson cut more corners by shooting Tesfaye and Depp at a live concert with about 70,000 free extras. Hello, angels. The production still ran long over schedule, with one crew member claiming that they only got two hours of sleep. Matters became unpredictable and chaotic, with the scripts constantly changing, leaving some wanting to never work with Levinson again. I feel like everyone's losing their minds. They didn't see the project as a collaboration, with Levinson possessing most of the control. I need full control. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. All the while, the crew felt the show was moving too far from its original theme, losing its, quote, female perspective with Simetz. Responding to the controversy, Tesfaye tagged Rolling Stone in a tweet with a scene throwing shade at the outlet. Rolling Stone? Are they a little irrelevant? Tesfaye elaborated in a W interview, saying, quote, I don't release my music until I think it is great. Why would this be any different? The Idol premiered at the Cannes Film Festival before making its HBO debut. Only time will tell if the drawn-out production, ballooning budget, and creative clashes will pay off for the network. The press has been brutal. Maybe Levinson and Tesfaye's vision for the project will come together, going down as the next euphoria. If not, expect to see hashtag release the Cymets cut down the line. Los Angeles is where all the monsters of the world come together. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.